I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I want to do a video on a subject matter that affects most of us. You must have a friend, somebody in your family, a child, a business partner, a worker, a religious leader, or a politician that is crafty. Crafty has two definitions. One is the ability to use your hands to produce handicrafts. In the Bible, the two words are used, two words are used interchangeably, being crafty and being cunning. Say it was is corny in weaving, corny in metal work. That is, he is good in fashioning things out of nothing. That's one form of being crafty, being corny, or being cunningly. I'm not too good in English. So, but there is another interpretation of being crafty, that is being trickish, being selfish, being subtle, being deceptive. The devil, the serpent in the wilderness was, I mean the garden of Eden was crafty. There are people who are crafty around you. Number one, they always want to have their way through deception and manipulation. They never come straight. They will always want to take advantage of you. Do you have a friend, somebody in your family, a church member, a worker, a child that you don't trust? Their stories are never straight. If they want to get something from you, they can come by praising you in any transaction they are having with you, their primary interest is what is uppermost. In fact, the average Nigerian politician is like that. The average African politician is like that. Many religious leaders are like that. Their primary interest, their major concern is themselves. Many religious leaders suffer from hypomania. They have an overbloated perception, imagination, grandiosity about themselves. So you see them, they like, people like big titles. People like exaggerating. They like everything should center around them. They are so scared of any other person doing well. Some of you belong to denominations where you are wrapped, imprisoned, cocooned by the religious leader and everything you do must center and revolve around his concepts even when he is wrong. That is idolatry. I was discussing with a young somebody who is a member of my mentorship group. And I was teaching him how to grow his simple business that he's doing now, that looks like a demeaning business, into a multimillionaire business and an enduring legacy and a franchise. Ah, it was, that's two days back. He said his mind is blown open that religion had caged him and wrapped him and they were prevented from listening to any other preacher which is very sad in the 21st century and in democratic setups which was what martin luther revolted against when protestants emerged from the parent church but in Pentecostalism today, you see it. You see pastors telling people to go and eat grass. 
pastors telling people to, to they will step on them and preach from their backs. They have imprisoned your brain. You see pastors enslaving people's mindset. You know? You see, in other religions, people will tell you, go and blow yourself up, you'll be a martyr. Kill people, you'll be a martyr. But in Islam, Muhammad did not even instruct them to kill people. I might be wrong, but from what Muslims have told me, because the king of Abyssinia was the one who saved the disciples of Muhammad when they fled from Mecca to Abyssinia, present-day Ethiopia, and they settled in Aksum. And the king of Ethiopia said, I will not send my visitors back to you for their weight of gold or whatever. I can't remember the statement. And so because of that, Islam was preserved. And Muhammad instructed that the people of the book should not be killed. I don't know where people got this jihad mentality of killing Christians and destroying people. Even when Muhammad was insulted, he said that people should not retaliate when they are insulted. Peace be unto his name. So, you see all these religious groups in the Middle East, al-Baghdadi, al-Zahwari, Osama bin Laden, very selfish people, very slicky people. They manipulate people for their personal gains. Same thing with even African traditional religion. Same thing with your regional leaders. Same thing with traditional leaders in many settings. Same thing with so-called uh, uh, freedom fighters. Look at one of them boasting that he has buildings all over the place. But what does he have in the Niger Delta as an institution to develop the place? Most people are crafty. The earlier you learn that, the better. Crafty. See what the Bible says in Job chapter 5 from verse 12. He thwarts the plans of the crafty so that their hands achieve no success. I have been treated very badly and betrayed by people I opened my heart to, opened my hands to, opened my businesses to, opened my knowledge to share with. People I slept on the same bed with, people I ate with, betrayed and abandoned. And I tried to check, review the lives of these individuals. Very few of them have done well. Very, very few. Very, very few. People you gave money to, I gave, my wife gave 3.5 million to somebody to bring a printing machine to us. He has not brought it. He is there. He will never do it. Because the Bible says it came with craft and took our money. Recently, I gave money to somebody to buy a recording machine to do stuff. He left with my recording machine. And I told him, you will not do well. I've had workers. I've been doing business since 1988. I've had workers, particularly in the Niger Delta here, in Ugedi, who have been crafty, who have defrauded, stolen, and used the money of my businesses to do things they have never ever done well. And they will present a very good face. Daddy, mommy, big uncle, man of God, they never ever do well. See, he catches the wise in their craftiness. Wise in this case is you think that you are wise. So, catches the wise in their craftiness and the schemes of the willy are swept away. That is to say, you will eventually be trapped. I was just watching uh, uh, something online about how people use 
people's SIM cards to defraud. The they still caught them. I was watching the people who went to assassinate uh, uh, Johnson Suleiman. They caught them. I don't care what is happening in Nigeria now. This generation of crafty politicians, deceptive politicians, evil politicians, false prophets. Do you know the extent to which pastors can manipulate people just to get money? Nowadays, I don't raise funds when I preach. No, 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 no. I will leave you. I will, once you tell me, raise funds, collect offering, take seed. No, 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 no. You should have planned for your meeting. What am I going to tell the people for collecting their money? People have done all kinds of rubbish in church and gradually the eyes of the people are opening. Put your left hand in your pocket, bring out what you can find there, put your right hand in your pocket, bring another team, raise two of them up, don't put them back in your pocket. No. Bring out your offering, stretch it, it's so that people can be shy of giving small denominations. God is not happy. You give 10 offerings so that you think that by the number of offerings you get, the more money you get. It is not like that. The people are also wise. I've gone to a church where they collected about seven to eight offerings. The people go and change the money. They're just wasting your time, wasting the time of the people and losing your soul because your mind has been callous by the desire for filthy money. Darkness comes upon them in daytime. I've been looking at some of these internet frosters. Look at Hush Puppy. Look at his friend, whether uh, Woodbury or whatever, jailed in the United States. Whatever they were using to demonstrate, seized. You want to do uh, baby mama, you will embarrass yourself. You want to take somebody else's husband, I've seen people ending up disastrously. You want to break girls' hearts, women's hearts, by being smart, being crafty, you will not do well. So, it says, he saves the needy from the sword in their mouth, and he saves them from the clutches of their deceitful, of, their, of the powerful. So the poor have hope, and injustice shuts his mouth. Blessed is the man whom God corrects. A, the man whose heart is after God. When you are doing, when you are going towards evil, God will be rebuking you. When an idea is coming, he will caution you. He will correct you. I, uh, Paul said, I want to do right, but I find myself doing good. But God corrects him and he turns around. I'm not an angel, but one thing I have made up my mind, I will not intentionally go out to be crafty. What then do you do? The Bible says, I send you out among um, wolves, sheep among wolves. He said, be wise. Be not ignorant of the devices of the devil. So you must know the way people behave, try to know the nature and the character of every person around you. If you decide to be plain to them and they are crafty, find a way of letting them know that you caught them. I've had people I trusted and trusted money to. What you gave them money to do, they never did. I've had the ones who think they are smarter than me. What's for you to think you are smarter, smarter than I am? No. You see children want to disobey their father. They think they are smart. It will event, you will eventually get caught up with what you are doing. Somebody just posted recently that if you do DNA analysis for 10 children, 
in Nigeria that a great percentage of them do not belong to their parents, to their fathers, the so-called fathers in court. So women are being crafty with your, their husbands, getting children from outside and bringing to the household. Eventually, it will leak out. And most times, excuse me, most times when the information is coming out, you are already very old. And it can be very, very embarrassing. So don't get easily excited when people bring schemes. Don't trust too easily. Question every move. Many are called, few are witches. Many are called, few are wicked. Many are called, few are thieves. Question every spirit. Don't do deals in a hurry. Don't believe things that will bring quick returns within a short time. You don't make money easily, if not all of us will have been rich. If somebody comes with a scheme, you put this money, you will get this. Ask yourself, why has he not made his entire community rich? Why do you, Nigerians are very tribalistic. Africans are very tribalistic. Why is he coming to meet you that is not a member of his family? You ask yourself, you question. Try as much as possible not to be a victim. Try as much as possible not to put yourself in a position of vulnerability. But the truth of the matter is that a great percentage of religious leaders, a great percentage of politicians, a great percentage of those who come around you because of who you are, because of what you have, they are crafty. Do not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. That is to say, have the syllabus of Satan in your hand. Know his most likely moves. Punctuate them before he executes them. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Pokey. Like the videos, it will make YouTube to suggest them to others. Subscribe to make you get alerted. Press the notification button when another video is up. And you can follow me on Facebook, Dr. Charles Apoki. And go to my online bookshop, PetraPublications.com or join my mentorship group, Dr. Charles Apoki. Send a message to me. Send a message to the admin or to me on plus two three four seven zero five two one three six seven six three. It's purely a mentorship group. God bless you.